that, you know, you go to the doctor and you, if you start asking the question, why did it, why, you know, why do I have this disease? And then the, the, almost always you're going to get what's well, genetics. It's bad luck. We don't know. I mean, you know, and I think we, we, a lot of times we do know, but you know, or, or, or it's knowable, but most people don't look into that. And so somebody wants to put you on an anti-inflammatory medication. You say, Hey doc, why am I inflamed in the first place? Why? Well, I don't know. Right. I don't know. I don't know. It's just bad luck, you know, and it's not, it's really, there's something going on. I, obviously I'm glad, you know, thankful to hear that you recovered and seems like you're completely, I mean, no, no residual symptoms. You're completely back to normal. It took about four weeks for a little bit of numbness in my toes to go away, but I have more I have more impacts from the serial nerve biopsy than yeah. I do. Well, that, that's the thing. Yeah, that's the thing I was going to ask because, you know, they do a serial nerve, nerve biopsy, you probably left with some numbness. And I mean, it was probably an unnecessary procedure at that point. I mean, you're already recovered. I mean, what's, what, why, how is it going to change your management? That's why, I, that's what anybody asked me about a test. Do I need a blood test? Do I need a procedure? It's like, how is it going to change? You know, how is this information going to change my management? And for somebody who's basically recovered and asymptomatic, like, why would you put somebody through a procedure? That's my take, you know, and I don't know, maybe it was, I mean, maybe they can justify saying, well, in case it comes back, we'll know what it is. But anyway, I. And that's, that's basically what yeah. they said. They wanted to confirm the diagnosis. Yeah. And I, you know, with the second neurologist who was a Harvard guy and, you yeah. know, he was very well respected and everybody on the hospital was telling me how lucky I was to have this neurologist when he came along and said, hey, let's confirm it's not cancer. Right. I, I, I did not argue with that. And I don't have any love for the medical field at, at this point. You yeah, know, looking yeah. back in hindsight, I spent 10 years in the army in special missions yeah. at the height of I was at, you know, I was at a uh, special missions unit in Fort Bragg the day that the tower, the towers fell. And I spent the next 10, 10 years going back and forth, 90 days on 180 day, 180 days off. 22 hour days, mm -hmm. uh, shift work all night, working all day, eating, you know, there were deployments where the only thing I had to eat were Skittles and lemon poppy seed, you know, the lemon poppy seed, uh, mm -hmm. pound cake, right. Mm -hmm. I, I, there were, there were some tough times I put my body through a lot. And so between the stress and the diet and, and, the just everything I went through, I'm confident that my metabolic health was damaged. And the only thing I was doing well for myself was lifting weights and exercise. Yeah. Um, so I didn't know what I might have been uh, uh, susceptible to. So when he said, Hey, it could be a form of cancer. Let's confirm it. I, you know, I decided to, to go with it. I could have said no, I didn't. And in hindsight, to your point, I probably should have said no to the biopsy because it's the only thing I have left is yeah. a scar and some numbness in my toes because he took the nerve that, that you know, the sensory nerve for the toes. Yeah. I'm guessing, I mean, the serial nerve biopsy is not going to, you know, diagnose cancer. I mean, it may rule out G, you know, Guillaume Beret, but it's not going to diagnose cancer. So when they came back negative, did they say, let's look for cancer some other way? Let's do a, let's do a, uh, uh, MRI scan or some, I mean, where was the cancer, mysterious cancer diagnosis when the Guillaume Beret is, is, is ruled out? So they stopped looking for it. Sounds like. Yeah, well, they ended up. So I I went to an outpatient neurologist, right? So I, so the neurologist I had been working with was in the hospital, and then when I went to see my outpatient neurologist, he looked at the biopsy, he looked at all the numbers, he looked at the lumbar punk and everything, and basically said, "Hey, I'm confident that it was Guillain Barre. It was an abnormal case of Guillain Barre, but I'm confident that's what it was." And to his point, you know, he's like, "You're good. You're obviously well recovered." But there is nothing to say that this won't ever come back at some point. And I, and I have to be honest, my immune system, because of, you know, that vaccine, I feel like my immune system has been compromised. I was hoping that the Guillain-Barre syndrome, like I said, I got sick four or five times between the onset of Guillain-Barre and that shot. Mm -hmm. I feel like I was hoping that was going to be the culmination and that I would be done with it after that. But it seems like every time my kids have sniffles or there's something going around, I'm getting it. And I feel like I've become very susceptible. My immune system has been compromised and I I'm susceptible to just kind of the regular illnesses here and there that I never really was up until that point. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. And, and, you know, certainly one of these subsequent infections, you know, viral infections or whatever, colds, I mean, could have set off the Guillain-Barre as well. And so there's different, you know, there's 
there's a whole bunch of different, you know, you don't know type of things. Let me go back to you went keto, you switched into carnivore after hearing, you know, Jordan Peterson, myself speaking about it. Um, what what sort of, you know, prior to the Guillain-Barre uh, diagnosis, what things did you notice? You just mentioned you had some sort of vague, you know, kind of numbness went away. What other things did you notice beneficial to you? Well, obviously the body composition, the inability to get sore, uh, you know, I could work out as hard as I'd ever worked out on a Tuesday, wake up Wednesday and feel like I hadn't worked out at all. You know, just kind of, um, the ability to, to go without getting sore. Uh, like I said, my hair, if I started listing everything, you know, my hair started growing back, the redness in my eyes went away. My tinnitus improved the, the bumps on the back of my arms and legs went away. The radial neuropathy, I just, it goes, the list goes on and on. Like I said, I was obviously intensely sick. I was, I was in the, in the beginning stages of diabetes. It's funny because I met a a long lost relative dialed me up, my first cousin once removed. So my father's cousin, I don't know anybody on that side of the family. And he called me up and we got to talking and he said, Hey, you need to know that in our family, we are prone to dementia, diabetes, and alcoholism. And I thought to myself, well, that sounds familiar, right? Like, I don't think the three of them are unrelated. Uh, I know it's probably controversial, but you've heard of how people have a tendency to kick negative habits once they've gone carnivore. I think a lot of that has to do with the, the dopamine receptors and the idea that alcoholism and sugar addiction are not unrelated in my eyes. Uh, that may be controversial as well, but I've seen it and I know that you've seen it. And, and, and I feel like I, you know, I ended up saving my life. I had a, a very painful, you know, forties, fifties uh, and sixties coming at me and I did not see it coming. And I, and I think that I avoided it by finding carnivore and I'm just, I'm grateful every day that I did. And I'm sure it'll be it, it it'll be familiar to people here. You know, the when you find it, you feel grateful and you're happy. And it lasts about 30 minutes. And then you get mad because you just can't believe. You know, I've read all the men's health. I exercised. I was in the gyms. The idea that I, I, I was 40 years old and I'd never even heard of the carnivore diet. And I've been lifting weights. I've been doing, you know, quote unquote, all of the right things. And if I would have heard it in my twenties, I would have thought it was crazy. Mm -hmm. 